Francisco AMP for endpoints inspects files at point of entry onto the endpoint, preventing the known bad files from entering. Meanwhile, unknown files can automatically be sent to AMP sandbox, where they will be analyzed for malicious behavior. But what happens after that? After the files are allowed onto the endpoints, AMP for endpoints continuously analyzes them, recording their activity, regardless of the file's disposition. In doing so, security teams can help protect against extremely stealthy, advanced malware that may not have been detected during initial inspection or even by the sandbox. It's this continuous analysis that can uncover malicious behavior quickly and prevent your security team from being completely blind to the scope of a potential compromise. This continuous analysis enables what we call retrospective security. It's the ability to look back in time on an attack to understand the entire sequence of events that took place and essentially change your mind on a file even after you've seen it the first time. Let's walk through an attack event and see how AMP for Endpoints enables continuous analysis and retrospective security. In this attack, an executable file that is made to appear as a benign PDF document is downloaded by a user from a web browser. This is done by adding .pdf to the file's .exe extension, resulting in the following .pdf.exe. Microsoft Windows will hide known file extensions by default, including .exe, so to the untrained eye, the file will appear to have a .pdf extension. The attacker can take this one step further by changing the icon of the executable to that of a PDF document when the default handler is a popular PDF reader such as Adobe Acrobat. From the dashboard on AMP for Endpoints, we can see a list of indications of compromise, so let's dig into this event. Click on Device Trajectory, and on this computer here, we can see a file executing with a known extension pattern being used to masquerade an executable as a benign document, report.pdf.exe. Report.pdf.exe appears to be performing a number of actions, including the creation of a number of .pyd files, which could indicate that this executable is packaged with a Python interpreter. This doesn't inherently signify that the file is malicious, but it may assist in the post-compromise investigation process. A number of suspicious domains are also being connected to by this executable. Later on, we see a detection and then a quarantine event occur for this file. The first event is for the Google Chrome temporary download file, and the second event is for the file move operation to the original file name. This is great to know, but how did it occur? Let's look at the events for the computer by clicking the events link on the computers page. We see that a number of events have occurred on this computer. The ones we'd like to focus on are those that led us to the detection of this file. The first event is a remote file fetch, which occurred due to the file having low prevalence throughout the organization. The file was fetched in order to be analyzed by AMP for Endpoint Sandbox to determine if it is in fact malicious. The second is a resulting detection event due to the file receiving a threat score of 100 by the Sandbox. To view the complete analysis report, click the Report button to see the fully rendered HTML version of the report. We can see here that the file received a threat score of 100 due to the file creating an autorun.inf file, which is commonly used by malware to spread infections throughout a network using file shares. Once the sandbox determined that the file was malicious, our cloud recall technology retrospectively detected and remediated the malicious file. This resulted in a cloud recall quarantine attempt event. Now that we've discovered how this file was detected and remediated, we can use device trajectory to trace the attack back to its origins. Scrolling back to the earliest timestamp, we see a number of connections being made from Google Chrome, chrome.exe here, on port 443. We can see that chrome.exe is creating two separate files here, the files that were detected in the cloud recall events. Finally, once the file was downloaded, we could see its execution. Based on the information available, we can deduce that one of the IP addresses that Google Chrome connected to was the source of the malicious executable and that this file was executed once it was downloaded. So in a very short amount of time, AMP's continuous analysis and retrospective security helped us understand the full scope and events of this attack. 
we determined through device trajectory that the delivery method of this attack was the execution of a masqueraded executable downloaded from Google Chrome. We next determined that a previously unknown sample was uploaded to be analyzed using remote file fetch due to its low prevalence throughout the organization and was later convicted, resulting in retrospective remediation by AMP for endpoints. And through the file's analysis by the sandbox, we determined that the file had malicious intent and potential spreading capabilities. Thanks for watching. To learn more about AMP for endpoints and its many capabilities, visit cisco.com slash go slash amp endpoint.